Okay, I've got the experienced game setup rules in front of me. So I'll be playing on veteran, which means three initial explosions and four hazardous materials that can easily explode, uh, getting placed in the beginning. So the very first uh, explosion, you roll just the black eight-sided die, and it has specific locations listed. So number eight means red four, black three. So red four, black three is this corner of the kitchen. So uh, with an explosion, uh, fire goes out from that space until it hits an open space where it makes more fire. If it hits a wall, it damages the wall. And if it hits a door, it just knocks the door clean off the hinges. So our first explosion is in that space and it gets a hot spot. I'll explain what hot spots do when we get to uh, how the fire advances during its phase. So the second explosion, we roll both dice for a target space, and as long as it's not already on fire, so red two, black five, we've got this bathroom today. So we get an explosion there. It's damaged this wall and knocked this door right off the hinges. Okay. And for our last one, it says to flip the black die over, so we go from 5 to 2, and we re-roll the red die. So black 2, 4. So, ooh, another explosion near the front of the house here. So right there, and it has done another point of damage to that wall. So when a wall has taken one point of damage, it's just weakened, but if it's taken two points of damage, it's all the way down. So now... Uh, you could, if there was no fire there, walk freely between those two spaces. And of course, I need to put the uh, hot spots for those other initial explosions down. So this is our initial fire. A lot of fire in that front area of the house, right next to the front door. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier to fight. Probably going to start right next to that front door. Okay, so now we've done our initial explosions. So now we place the hazmat markers. So we have four more random dice rolls. As long as it's not on fire, it will get a hazmat piece. And if fire ever enters the space where the hazmat is, you get a bonus explosion. Hooray. Okay. Now red six one. So we've got two hazmats in the dining room now. One in the corner of the kitchen. Red one, black six. That one's right next to a door. Relatively easy to get that one out of the house if we needed to. Well, you can see in the corner here that Aurora has decided to join me. She's one of my kitties and she likes to uh, sit on the chair next to me. A lot of times when I'm playing games, she's much nicer about it than Felix is, who likes to stand on the game board <laughs> or even lay down on it and just push the pieces everywhere. But she likes to sit next to me, and that's much nicer for gameplay. <laughs> so yeah, you just make yourself comfortable right next to me. And uh, hopefully she'll be uh, well-behaved. Aw, good kitty. I love you too. Okay, so we've got our hazmats on the field. Next up are our victim markers. So I've already removed uh, what it says to remove uh, one false alarm and two of the victims. So everything else is all randomized over on the side of the board. So we're going to be putting three of them on the board, any space that's not already on fire. Oh. Okay, come on over. If you want to, or you can stand back. <laughs> uh, as long as she's polite, I don't like to stop her. She's, she's so cute. Okay, so nope, that space is on fire. Try again. Red one, black two other part of the living room but still close to fire how about our second one black three red two definitely have to focus on that area early this game how about one more uh somewhere a little bit different up oh, oh, that's on fire need somewhere not on fire so red six black six so other side of the house relatively safe in the beginning okay and then uh, I'm not playing with the specialists or the vehicles, so there are specialized roles that you could potentially play with that have special abilities. 
I'm just planning to play with uh, basic firefighters who get four actions they are all the same. In future games, I'm going to add on more of these special things, and I've even got some expansions that uh, I can add the second floor or some different buildings to play with, but I'm keeping it basic right now. They're just standard firefighters with uh, no vehicles, for this game at least. So let's see, uh, additional hotspots. So now we get three more hotspots, uh, places that it's really bad if the fire goes. So red one, black six, where that hazmat is, of course. These ones aren't necessarily connected to a fire at all. Red three, black eight, one more. And black two, red six. Okay. So I believe that is the rest of the setup, aside from choosing which space around the building uh, we'll be starting on. So now I think it is time to go over the actions the firefighters can take on their turn. So I showed very briefly earlier, I've got the actions in a turn order on my little zoom cam here. So on your turn, you get uh, four actions, the actions you can take. Uh, just moving from one space to another one is one action point. Uh, to move into a space that is on fire takes two action points, uh, because fire is very stressful. <laughs> uh, notably, you also can't end your turn on a space that's on fire. You have to uh, leave that space before you uh, stop moving. Or, or put out the fire. Okay, but it'd be easier just to put the fire out first and then move into that space and not take the extra hit. Um, it is also difficult to move if you're carrying something. All victims are assumed to be uh, rendered unconscious, so they're not able to help you uh, move them out. So it's two actions to move one space while carrying a victim. Also two actions to uh, move a uh, hazardous material. I guess they're all heavy. Okay, to open or close a door is one action. Uh, doors can stop the fire. They can uh, prevent an explosion from going through once before they get knocked off the hinges. Uh, but you can open them, move through, and then close them behind you to uh, stop the spread of the fire in the future. Okay, uh, to extinguish fire. So I'll go back over to the main view for this. So it's one action to downgrade fire to smoke and another action to remove smoke from the board. Um, notably, uh, when you've got smoke that's next to a fire, it always immediately catches fire. So it's not useful to like downgrade a fire to a smoke when it's already next to other fire. So it's two actions to get a fire all the way off the board from uh, being on fire on the board next to other stuff. So it's one action per level you decrease, and one action will get a smoke just straight off of the board. So uh, chopping, you can use uh, every firefighter as a fire axe. It's two actions to do a damage to a wall, which can be useful to make a hole in the wall that you can walk through. So for example, somewhere over here, if somewhere that's already weakened, you can spend two actions, chop, and now that is a wall that you could move through or extinguish the fire through, something like that. So although it is spending some of the structural integrity of the house, it can be useful in some situations. Okay, all of the uh, golden abilities are the experienced rules that we're not going to be using. You can't drive if there's no vehicles, and we're not playing with the special rules, which is what the crew change would be. This also has reminders about uh, Adjacency is just the orthogonal directions, no diagonals. And yeah, wall segments, it takes two damage markers to render it uh, the wall destroyed. One damage is just weakened and it still blocks movement and fire. Yeah, going over to the right card, uh, like I said, normally you get four actions. And uh, this reminds you, you, you can also save unspent actions. So if you're in a spot where it would be dangerous to use the last action to move right up next to fire, you can save those actions for a future turn up to a maximum of four. So after each firefighter has done their set of actions, we do the fires phase where we roll the two dice and whatever space it lands on, if there's nothing there, you put smoke onto that space. If there is already fire on that space, you get an explosion. 
Um, if there is a hot spot on that space, you keep rolling, kind of like doubles in Monopoly, except the third time you don't go to jail, you just keep getting more fire. So uh, if you get a hot spot, you still put fire or smoke in that space, but then you roll again, and if you keep rolling hot spots, that can keep happening. And then after you've landed on something that isn't a hot spot, uh, you then add one of these extra hot spot markers we've got onto the board until you run out of uh, however many extras you've got. Uh, for the veteran difficulty level, you can have up to six more hot spots show up on the board during the game, so I've got those off to the side here. So, advance that, explosions, flashovers, I'll explain those as we go through the game so we don't need to go down into that. Uh, if fire enters the space of a firefighter, they get knocked down and they're sent to one of these blue spaces on the outside. These are considered to be ambulances. So a firefighter who's knocked down thankfully doesn't get killed. In this game, they just go to the nearest blue space that's outside the building, which is where the ambulances are assumed to be. Um, if fire hits a point of interest, you flip it over, and if it's a victim, you've lost that victim. Which brings us into the game end conditions. So to win this game, you need to save seven victims, which means uh, getting them outside the building. If you're playing the uh, variant that has the vehicles, like the fire engine or the ambulance, you need to get them to the ambulance. Um, I don't have ambulances in this game, so I'm just going to be playing it as if you get them outside, you've rescued them. Once I've got an ambulance on the board, you have to get them to the space where the ambulance is. Okay, so they're not rescued just by getting them out in those cases, but this game, outside is enough to rescue them. Now, if you... so you have to rescue seven to win. Um, on the other side, if you lose at least four, then, uh, mm -hmm. then you also lose the game. And... Uh, so those are mutually exclusive. I think that means there must be 10 victims total, because once you've hit four lost, you can no longer get seven rescued. And the other way to lose is if you uh, run out of structural integrity. So there's a total of these 24 black markers, and if all 24 are on the board, uh, you lose. Yeah, when all of them are placed. So it's not 24 and one more. When the last one gets put on the board, that's when you lose. So that's the how you play, the end conditions. I think it is time to start playing. So the last thing of setup that I didn't do was choosing where to start. So we definitely want to uh, focus on this front room and we've got a door in the way. So that's where I'll put one of the two firefighters. And the other one, I think I want to fight this fire in the back and I can sort of come in from the uh, the back of the house and also get this hazmat out of the way, hopefully. So I'm going to start the blue firefighter way over there. So I'm, for no particular reason, I'm going to start with the red firefighter as going first. So first action, open the door, second action, enter the room. Uh, it's two actions to completely uh, remove one of these two uh, fires. I think I'll fight this one down, and next turn I'll go towards the uh, the other one. So that's two actions to get rid of that, and that's all of red's actions. So let's see where the smart, uh, fire advances. So red one, red one, black three, that's over here. Okay, so no fire yet, but it's in a dangerous spot. Okay, so now it is blue's turn. So he can open the door, move inside, and just for safety's sake, let's get that hazmat out of the way. So two actions to carry that right back out. So at least the door is open now, but this hazmat will not explode. We've gotten the hazmat to safety. Now if we can just get some victims to safety. So that's the end of Blue's turn. Open door, move in, and then two to move back out. So his fire goes... Black 7, red 6. We got some smoke in the back starting up. Okay, now we're back over to red on the front side of the house. So we got that fire that's in our way, so let's uh, push that down by 2. And then, instead of fighting the rest of the fire right here, 
let's see if we can get those points of interest uh, confirmed or out of the way, just because there's that smoke that showed up. If that smoke wasn't there, I probably would have kept fighting the fire, but that makes me a little bit nervous. So uh, two to fight the fire, two movement, and his fire comes in, red five. So that has showed up right on top of a hazmat over there. That's not good. But it's not on fire yet. That said, if anything happens to this wall, that smoke would immediately catch fire and cause a explosion, which would be very not good. So that's a problem, and my firefighters are not over there. But it is Blue's turn. So Blue, now that that door is open, can move two to go straight in. And because that door has already been exploded off the hinges, he can spend two actions to just douse that fire right away. Okay, so he's going to come in from the back and try to knock that stuff down a bit. So his fire roll, red four, black six, right on top of another hazmat, and close to more danger. Well, that's some fun rolling. Okay, but now it's Red's turn. So, I think the one that's in more danger is this one, so let's see what this is. We have found a victim. Okay, so that's good to know. Uh, second action, let's just get the smoke off the board. Don't want to have any chance of that getting ignited. And I think the best thing to do is just start getting that victim out of here. So two actions to move them one space towards the uh, exit there and maybe uh, on the next one he can fight the fire as he continues to head up, head out so now his fire roll black seven red six really there's only one spot on that area that had anything so now that is active fire so any smoke that comes down next to it will immediately ignite not fun for that bit okay so now we're back over to blue's turn and he'll move one in, and he can spend two actions dousing one entirely. And if he spends his last action, because there's no other fire next to it, it won't immediately ignite again. So it is worth just reducing that one down to smoke, I think. So those were his four actions. So at least that fire is less pronounced at the moment. Red two, seven. So that's in that back bedroom, but there's nothing valuable there at the moment. Okay, back over to red. So that door gives me a little bit of safety from that potential fire, so I can move to there and then completely douse this fire. So that way next turn I can just get him all the way out and there's less of a chance of an explosion happening right there. Okay. Let's see what his fire looks like. Red six, five. So over on that side of the house, things continue to get a bit more precarious. Okay, but it's Blue's turn. And now he can, uh, well, he can finish off that fire over there. And now it's just a question of, does he go for the other point of interest or does he chop his way and start fighting the fire? I think I'm tempted just because like, there's all these hazmat things. I need to get him somewhere more useful. So two more actions to do the chop. And just for the sake of safety, I'm not going to move him into the other room yet. I'm going to save one action for the future, and hopefully that will turn out well. So now it's Blue's fire roll. Red six, black three. Get a lot of red sixes, I swear. I'm... Yep, there's other sides to that die. Okay, so now it's red's turn. Nothing has changed about that plan. Let's get that victim out. So two and four, and that actually is an ambulance square. But just getting outside, we have saved our first victim. That was all of his uh, action points. So... Uh, we need to replenish points of interest, but first we do his fire roll. So black one, red five. That's smoke in that room. And now we replenish points of interest. So we take a new one and add it to the board. Black one, that's exactly what I just rolled. 
So they can go on smoke, they can't go on fire, but that is a valid location to put the new point of interest. So now I really need to check that side of the building out. I guess that's going to be Blue's duty. So for Blue, uh, his turn starts, so we'll move him in, spend two to fight that fire down, and we'll remove that smoke and make that hazmat a little bit safer uh, using the extra token. So two to move, two on the fire, and one on that hazmat smoke. Okay, so now we see what his fire phase looks like. Blue 4, red 5. Literally where he is standing, the smoke has come in. <laughs> well, glad he's there, I guess. So, now we're back to red's turn. We've got a lot of smoke in the living room, a little bit more fire, but we've got another point of interest, and if that's another victim, we can bank victims as much as we can. So, let's just get red's straight to that point of interest with all four of his moves. We have found another victim. Okay, so it'll be two full turns to get them out that way. So that's probably what he'll be doing. <laughs> but now it's time for red smoke roll. Red one, black eight. That's the back corner of that bedroom. So the story of this fire has been that initial raging kitchen fire is starting to creep into the dining room over there. Okay. And of course, that one very unlucky smoke <laughs> right next to that unlucky person in the small bedroom. But now it is Blue's turn again. So we've got pesky smoke in our way. Get rid of that for one. Second action, move over to there. And let's fight this fire. Hopefully that makes the uh, through that wall a little bit safer too. So smoke, move, and two for the fire. That's his four actions. Let's see where the next smoke pops up. Red one, black two. That is exactly where the red firefighter is. Ah, interesting luck there. I guess our smoke tanks are leaking or something. Okay, but now it's Red's turn. If I possibly can, I don't want to leave smoke sitting there. That is going to make it take an extra turn to get the guy out, but I think it's worth it. Just as much prevention as you can get. So one to that, and then two to move a space over with the victim, and he'll just save, bank that last action. Okay. So end of his turn. New fire roll. What have we got? Black one, red four. So right next to our front door, we've got a new piece of smoke. Haven't been hitting hot spots at all. Cross fingers, but that remains true. Okay, so Blue's turn. So now Blue has a choice. You could try to finish off that last bit of fire or just, yeah, let's, let's definitely take care of that hazmat and uh, see if we can help this person, so. Action one, open door. Two, go through. Three, remove the smoke from the hazmat. And now there's a question of which way to go. That person's right next to fire. That person is on smoke next to a hazmat. This is a pretty tough choice here. That said, red can probably chop their way through and try to deal with it. I think I'm gonna send blue this way. So he's got one more action. I'm just going to save it up. So open door, move through, de-smoke. Yeah, he's saving one action for the... Hopefully uh, get on over to that, that point of interest in the small bedroom, and we'll see what's going on. So, Blue's thing is... Okay, that is... Uh, this has now advanced to a fire in the master bedroom. So, yay. Thankfully, there's nothing over there right now. Okay, so we're back over to Red's turn. So he can move two and move two, and he can use his extra point to douse that smoke. So it came in handy after all. He hasn't saved that victim yet, but he's keeping the house safe. Okay, so now it's Red's fire roll. Let's see what we got. Red four, black six. So that is right on top of that hazmat again. Okay. 
But it's Blue's turn, and he's got an extra action. Let's see if we can deal with that point of interest. So move one to there. Get as much smoke as I possibly can for two and three. Step four, move there, and there's no good reason to move that, to open that now. I think I want to save, to hold on to this action, because I can't inspect the point of interest yet. So let's just keep that uh, door closed as a little bit of safety for the firefighter, because I can't save that person either way at this, this turn at least. So let's see what blue's fire roll looks like. Red three, black six. Right next to that hazmat. So the kitchen's starting to smoke up again. Okay. But we're back to red. We can finally save this victim. So two to get out there. We've saved our second person. Okay. And now he's got two actions left. I don't really want to chop in from the outside, but I can move to uh, hopefully deal with that lone bit of fire and uh, then move towards the dining room. Okay, so that was his full four. Let's get our fire roll. Red two, black seven. So this has spontaneously burst into flame without any impact of the fire next to it. Okay. And right, we need to replenish the points of interest. So we've already done the fire roll. Let's see where this one is going. So red two, black eight. Oh no! right between those two fires that sprung up. That is a big problem. I guess Red's gonna be sprinting over to there instead of heading towards that corner. Uh, Cause Blue does not have any clear of a path over to that side. So Blue's gonna focus on this one, also in danger, but he's next to it. So uh, four actions plus one, we'll open that and let's see what we are dealing with. We've got a puppy. Gotta save the puppy. So that's two actions. It's two more to just... Let's just get that fire out of the way. Um, he cannot move the puppy out with that one action, but I think he's going to be moving this way and probably dealing with that if he can. So let's get his fire roll going. Okay, red five, black two. So that's right in the middle of that dining smoke area. Okay, so Red's turn. Open that door. Two actions to remove that fire. And we'll just move him in. And hopefully he... Let's see. I think Red's sprinting that way. So he's used his four moves. Let's see where his fire roll goes. Red, four, black, eight. The first thing in this little room. Okay. So now it's Blue's turn. He's moving with the puppy, so he's taking two actions for each move. And he's getting closer to the door. Hopefully next turn he can get that puppy to safety. Uh, time for his fire roll. Red five, black five. So some smoke coming out of that planter. Okie dokie. So let's see, we've got our red firefighter coming back up. Sprinting towards that back bedroom, seeing if there's anyone to save back there. All right, this is Blue's roll. <laughs> I can't remember if Blue just did the planter, and then I think that roll was unnecessary. Yeah, I think Blue just made that planter pop up. If not, then I missed a roll. Sorry, my memory blanked for a second. So it is Red's turn with his four actions. One, two, in that space. So we'll knock one fire down. Oh, because that's knocked down, he can actually skip through that wall. So move to there with his four. So red's roll. Oh, six, eight. All the way in the far corner. That's the first time this one's popped up. That, that sink is smoking. Bad plumbing. Okay. So now we are... No, I just rolled that. Now it's Blue's turn. So he can move two with the puppy, open the door, and using his saved up action, he can get the puppy to safety. We are at three victims saved, nobody lost so far. Doing pretty well. Okay. So, 
Uh, that was all of his actions. Let's see how Blue's fire roll goes. Red four, black seven. So we've got some more smoke coming up in the little game room in the back there. Okay, Red's turn. Let's go save. Let's go try to save the person in the back room. So one to move in, two for the fire, and four gets him to that space. He's next to that point of interest. Oh, I forgot to refill the point of interest from the dog. So he was right there. I'll gotta refill the point of interest first, but that's almost certainly what I'm gonna be doing. So three, three, it ends up there. Yep, doesn't change anything. So there's Red's turn. Now Red does his fire roll. One, two. Okay, so that's up here. Nothing next to that so far. Okay, now Blue's turn. Blue needs to go try to save that point of interest. So one, two, three. Let's just desmoke that so that it's less likely to go off. All these hazmats are a problem too, but thankfully uh, we've managed to keep most things under control here. We've been getting really lucky to avoid those hot spots. Knock on wood. Okay, so Blue's fire roll. Red one, black three, over next to that one. Okay, still not a big concern, so red's turn. Let's see what's behind this one. We've got another victim. So one to move into there. Let's just put out that fire. And he has to save his last action, because he can't move with the victim. Probably a good idea for him to just go through this room, get them out there, and then he's next to all that smoky area to deal with. So, his fire roll now. Black two, red four. Ah, it's our first hot spot roll. So, with the hot spot, we place the roll, but now, with the hot spot, we roll again. So, red six, black two. Really, no hot spots, and then two in a row. So, we just landed on a hot spot, we roll again. So, red two, black one. So, we place it down, and because this one isn't a hot spot yet, it has now become a hot spot. Hot spots beget more hot spots. So, that was rough. Okay. Oh boy, who's. I think that was red's turn. I think I gotta start tracking turns with something. So let's use my raptor claw. So, blue here. Their turn. Last time they uh, desmoked where that point of interest is. Now we got more smoke coming up. Let's remove that smoke that just popped up. Move there. Let's see what it is. That one's a false alarm. So nothing there t that we need to rescue. So that's two actions. Third action. Let's get rid of the other smoke. And let's start moving towards, hopefully, eh, there's always the chance the point of interest pops up right on top. Let's save that last action, because we can always use the action later. So, Blue's fire roll is 2-2. Two, two. Okay, suddenly we've got a lot of contiguous smoke over there. That's not good. Okay, back over to Red. So Red has a victim they are trying to save. Let's open the door. Two more actions to get to there. And let's remove one more smoke. So a total of four actions. They're still holding on to their extra one. And that's the end of his turn. So fire roll. Red three, black five. Right in the middle of the kitchen. Nothing's been there for a little bit. Okay, back over to blue. So blue has a conundrum to deal At the end of blue's turn, I forgot to refill the point of interest again. I'm pretty sure it won't change red's turn. Two red, black, yeah. So nothing changes, but now that point of interest is in a lot of danger. <laughs> okay, so I move red. Now we're on blue's turn again. Count, yep. Three, 
no more points of interest that I've missed, thankfully. But Blue needs to get over there pronto. It's probably worth chopping down this wall to go through, because I've thankfully been lucky with the structural damage, so I've got a few to spare. So move one, two to chop, three to remove that smoke. No, no, four removes the smoke. And I remain holding on to the spare action. So hopefully he can get over there and uh, remove the uh, danger from where that point of interest is. So it's time for Blue's fire roll. Black four, red two. That's in this bathroom coming out of the toilet. Okay, now we're on Red's turn. So Red can move two. I almost always take the smoke out if I can. So move two to there, three. For four, I'll remove the smoke. I'll save the person next turn. I'd rather not have more fire <laughs> if I can manage it. So that last one is saved again, and we'll get them out next turn. So red's fire roll coming up. Red two, black seven. That's back in the master bedroom. Not so dangerous. We're back over to blue. So blue can get into that area. One, two. Desmoke for three. Move there for four. Put that smoke out for his extra five action. So that point of interest is doing a little bit better. And that smoke is not so concentrated. Let's get Blue's fire roll going. Red four, black two. Uh-oh, we got that hot spot again. So now we get to keep rolling. Red one, black seven is in the back room. Not a hot spot until now. So as the game goes on, you get more hot spots. Thankfully, we didn't get any really early. And that's been helping us, <laughs> helping the board look so good in this game. So that was Blue's roll, so now we're back over to Red. Let's save this victim. So first two actions, we're up to four saved. More than halfway there now. Now two more actions, he pretty much is guaranteed to be wanting to go straight back in. But just like last time, let's hold on to those actions. So... He's up to three saved ones, but that means he can have a really good turn once we know where the new point of interest is spawning in. So let's try not to forget that this time. It's Red's Fire Roll. Red for Black 2. I did it again. All the hot spot rolls are coming in on that space. So that smoke gets upgraded to fire, and now we roll again for hot spots. So red five, black four, right here, and that is now a new hotspot. Mm. Getting a bunch of smoke in this house. Okay, so it is Blue's turn. Let's uh, see. He's right next to two different points. No, it's not Red's, not Blue's turn, because I need to replenish the points of interest. The easiest thing to forget in this game. So, red six, black one, we've got a new point of interest back in the dining room. We already walked through that space. How did we miss them? Don't know. Really, the question marks mark noise, so someone was hiding and they just came out and fell down and knocked a table or a plate off the table. Made some noise for us, and now we know there's something there. Okay, so now it is Blue's turn. So, Blue's got their four actions. Let's deal with one of those smokes at least. Second action gets over to there, and we've got an actual victim this time. So three and four, let's get them closer to that door. And that's the end of Lou's turn. So fire roll. Red four, black one this time. So comes in as a smoke, but it's next to fire, immediately upgraded. Yay, and it's right next to us. Okay, back over to red. So, the point of interest did not come in over there, so now he wants to sprint across the map and be useful over there. If we're lucky, and those are both victims, we could win based off of what's on the board right now. So, maximum of seven actions. One, two, three, four, to get that smoke out of the way. Now, how many do I want or need to bank up? 
I think it's I can get as far as removing that smoke. But I always like to remove smoke if I can. So that took all three of the extra actions, and he is now in a very centralized location to hopefully fight some more fires. So reds, fire roll. Red five, black four. So that upgrades to fire. And it was a hot spot, so we roll again. And that's one of our newly introduced hot spots. So black no no red two black eight is in this corner. And hot spots have spread again. But that's all smoke in that room for now. Ooh, lots of hot spots in that back corner. Okay, back over to Blue's turn. I can fight the fire for two and get the person out. Fight fire whenever you can. Helps, helps save the building. So from two more, we have saved our fifth victim. And nobody lost so far, so we're doing extraordinarily well. Okay, that's the end of Blue's actions. Let's get fire roll. Red one, black six. So that is smoke and a hot spot. <laughs> no hot spots in the first half of the game. So many now. Red two, black one. So that already is a hot spot. We roll again. Red one, black two. Not the same roll. <laughs> So almost all of our hot spots are placed on this board now. Ooh, glad we've got a lot of the victims out. <laughs> but uh, because we saved somebody, we may need to replenish those points of interest anywhere that's not actively on fire. So for seven, well, I guess Red's just going to backtrack and go out that other door because it is now Red's turn. And if I get seven, I win. If I wanted to just style on the game, I suppose I could try to rescue every possible victim, but not going to go that far for this stream. So, uh, it's Red's turn. That that seems like the play. One, two. Ah, we've, we found somebody. So three and four, and he's almost to that door. Okay, so now time for Red's fire roll. Red three, black two. Lots. Of, oh, that's smoke, but it's next to a fire, so immediately upgrades. Uh, that'll be a problem for blue there. Speaking of, it's now blue's turn. So he can't immediately get to that person, but he can move there, fight that fire for two, and remove the smoke for one. At least protect the house if you can't get the uh, people out. So, fire roll. Red three, black three. That is directly on that point of interest. But it does not immediately catch fire, so we haven't lost anybody yet. Red's turn. Let's get that victim to safety. We're up to six and nothing. So he's got two more. I think it's best to uh, hold on to those two until we know what he wants to do. So fire roll and then point of interest. So, red four, black three, we've got another one of our old hot spots, and this is bad, because that's an open wall. It spreads, it spreads, but it was a false alarm, so we didn't lose anybody. But we easily could have, there's more victims than false alarms in that, in that pile. So we got lucky, very lucky there. But that was a hot spot, roll again. Red one, black four, so that is in this bathroom, and that is our last additional hotspot for a total of 12 on the board. There are six times eight, 48 spaces, so a quarter of the board is now hotspots, where we would keep rolling. I do like the house rule that any particular tile can't, can't flare up more than once, so any particular hotspot wouldn't uh, go twice but you would just roll some other location instead. Just because it makes more sense. It's kind of like uh, with Pandemic, a single city count outbreak more than once. Yeah, maybe the game's supposed to be a little bit harder that way, but it's pretty rare. Okay, so why did I roll that? There was no need for that roll because we just placed the last one 
there along with the hot spot. Just rolling for fun, I guess. Okay, so red just saved that. Now I have to put two points of interest on the board because we rescued one and one got removed. So the first point of interest is going to go in 1-1. One, one. Very close to blue, whose turn it will be very soon. And the second point of interest, red 6, black 7. Pretty far from everybody. Okay, now it's blue's turn. So blue can check out this point of interest right away. It's a person. So two actions to get them there. If nothing catastrophic happens, next turn we can win this game. <laughs> okay, but now it's time for blue's fire roll. Red three, black one. That is in the doorway in front of me. But it's not a fire, won't stop us yet. Okay, red's turn. Red's turn. Red has six to go. There's a lot of fire over there now. But there's also a lot of smoke over here. Really, I just need to protect the building right now. So, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll just stop there. So, move. You use one of his bonus actions, hold on to the last one and just try to reduce the amount of fire in this house. Okay, time for Red's fire roll. Red six, black seven sounds very familiar because we just rolled that for our point of interest roll. Okie dokie. But I think at this point, Blue is able to just double move with that person. They've rescued our seventh person and I believe that is victory for the firefighters. There could be up to three more, either in those or these point of interest that we could try to save if we wanted to uh, go overboard, but I think that is it for now. So yes, we have saved the people. The house has not collapsed. <laughs> we have saved enough of the people. We've hit our goal of seven. <laughs> So, we have won this very, uh, very lucky game of Flashpoint. Uh, we did not have a ton of hot spots early on, and that really helped uh, pave the way for some, uh, for keeping the fire down and uh, getting us out those doors. So, that's my uh, very first recording. That will hopefully, uh, hopefully turn out okay, and maybe this one will actually get uploaded. We'll see. Hope the uh, audio turned out okay this time. So, uh, to wrap up, uh, this was a good game, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.